Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to produce a PCB using the LPKF Protomod S62. We are starting off this tutorial in the assumption that you already have the Gerber files generated from your PCB design software. So if you do not have that already generated, please do that first. And then we'll get right into the production of this PCB. To start off, turn on the LPKF Protomat. Inside the cover on the right side of the bed, there's a mains power switch. So turn that on and then we'll get into the computer. Right here on the desktop, we will open Boardmaster. As you can see, the startup bitmap is missing. This happens sometimes with this program, but that's all right. As there is no tool in the machine, I will just hit OK here. However, if there is a tool in the milling head, enter a free toolbox position and check the box in the main clamp so the machine can put the tool away safely. Next we will open up the toolbox and check if all the tools that are in there are the ones that are in the machine currently. This is very important because there is a freezing software installed on this PC so the toolbox is not updated if somebody has changed out a tool in the previous session and the PC has been restarted the toolbox will be recovered to the previous state so it, the machine won't know there's other tools in the place that another tool used to be. As you can see it will ask you to drive the head to the pause position. We will do that right now so you can clearly uh, see all the tools in the toolbox and check them out. Once the toolbox menu is open you can check all the tools against the ones in the machine. Make sure that they are all matching in size and type. You can also use the color indicators at the, in the board master software itself as a good indication. Next up we'll go back to the desktop and start up circuit cam to start importing our Gerber files. So click the import button and browse to your Gerber files. You can select them all at once and then open them to temporarily import them. Next up we will get the layers into the correct layer template type. And we will uncheck any layers that we don't want to import such as symbols, silk screens, solder paste. We don't need any of that. A quick side note on the drill file. You may encounter some problems with this. If the size doesn't match in the preview, just play around with the decimal positions and the digits MN columns until the size XY of your drill file matches the one in your design. So it's probably a little bit smaller than your board itself. Just play around with that until it matches and then hit OK. As you can see we now have the design imported and we will start by removing these automatic targets that multi-sim and ultiboard have imported for us. We don't need to print those, it's just a waste of time. Then we will run the COM2 routing. We will use the default settings right here, 2mm and a 0.5mm tap. Next up is the rub out layer. This will remove any copper that you don't use in your traces. This will make soldering a lot easier, you don't get bridges as fast. To initiate the rubout, click the rubout button and then go to the corner of your rubout zone, click once, move your cursor to the other corner and then click again. You will not get any visual feedback right now, but as you insulate the layers this will be calculated. The design is now ready and we are ready to move back to Boardmaster and get prototyping. To do that just click the Boardmaster icon. It will then ask you to save the file somewhere, so it will just hit OK right here. It's not that important. It will then come up with a message box telling you the file has been exported. And then you can move back to Boardmaster and indeed the file is right there in our workspace. We will just zoom in a bit and check if all our file is there. And it seems to be. So we can move on to the next step. You may notice that in this design the pads switch around when I switch from the bottom layer to the top layer. This is because this design has been made with the traces in the bottom layer and the drills are always in the top layer. So we will have to flip this print over in between layers. So let's get back to default zoom and start drilling our reference holes. To do this, first insert a second base plate into the machine and then on top of that attach your PCB.
Then we are ready to close up the machine and get to drilling. To drill the holes, we will first select a 3mm drill in our toolbox. Once the machine has grabbed onto that, we will move the head to the home position. Once the machine's head has moved to the home position, turn on the head motor and then click the head position button to lower the head and drill the hole. The software will then ask you if you are drilling a reference hole and as we are doing it manually, we will answer no. After that, move the head back up and turn off the spindle motor. To drill the second reference hole, move the head 295mm to the right and then repeat the same drilling procedure. After this hole is drilled, don't forget to turn off the spindle motor again and quick load the tool into the toolbox. Now that our reference holes are in place, we can finally move on to the exciting part, milling the PCB itself. First, we will select the layer with our copper traces and click the All Plus button to add all the elements in this layer to the to-do list for this phase. Then we'll start the phase by, you guessed it, clicking the Start button. The machine will now start routing the traces and will automatically stop and warn you when it is done. It may swap tools within phase as needed. Mika. Home Coop, we have dinner planned for some very special guests. Quick load the tool after the end of the phase and then choose your next layer. In this case, we chose the drill layer, so we had to flip the board around. Repeating the process, we drilled all the holes in the PCB. So we quick load our tool and move on to the next layer cutting outside or the contour. This was the final phase of our PCB and we are now ready to break it out of the board and sand the copper traces to remove the oxidation layer. So this is the final product a small PMOD to 7 segment board. Thank you for watching this video tutorial. 
and if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.